Welcome to Hamsters POS. We will be explaining the POS retail module. After we insert the username and enter, the point of sale screen opens up. It's where we have categories, subcategories, and our items. When we want to sell an item, we scan it with our barcode reader and it will show up in the order section. When we want to finish our order, we click on pay. In case the customer hands us $200, we type it down and Hamster's POS will tell us how much we should pay them back. In this case, it's $90. The multi-currency option helps calculate in both US dollars and Lebanese pounds. Here, the customer gives a $100 and then pays $9 in the Lebanese currency. We close the bill. These bills are on hold. If we want to assign the bill to a customer, we click on Select Customer and if they are new, we click on Create. We write down their name, Search Key. If they are VIP or if they have a discount, we write it down. We can also give them an account ID. If they have credits, we can type down how much. We can give them a first and last name, email, phone number, their address, or multiple addresses. If they have a debt, we can specify the credit period by day, month, or year. We can specify if they are subscribed to any of our services and when it expires. Once we fill all our customers' data, we click on the check button. It will automatically let us know that it is a VIP customer who enjoys a 5% discount. Their name will appear in the order. We choose the items for the order, we click on pay and we close the order. The bill that will be printed will have the customer's name on it. We can look at the customer's data for their history, transactions and orders. Now, we are going to see what each function button in Hamster's POS does. The delete button will delete a line. For example, we chose two of an item, we want to delete the whole line, so we click on delete and then yes. If we want to delete one item and not the whole line, we choose the multiplied item and click on minus. If we want to delete the whole ticket, we click on delete at the bottom of the screen to delete the ticket. We choose the tickets and delete them entirely. If we want to look for an item that we cannot find or whose barcode was lost, we click on search. We have the choice to search by barcode, name, category, by price and sell price. If we type in the word item in the name section and press execute, we have a list of all the items. If we type in item 2, we get a list of specific items. Then we choose what we want and it shows up in the orders section. If we want to search by barcode, we type in the barcode, in this case, it's 12. All the items with 12 in them show up, we choose our item. This is how we use the search feature. When we click on the edit button, if the user has access to it, they can change the name of the items, update the units and update the prices. Let's say we want this item to be priced at $4, if we click on the check button, we would update the price only for once but if we click on update before we click the check button, the update will be made permanently. The item will always be priced at $4. The attributes button is used in the restaurant mode when we want to add attributes to Hamster's POS system. The note button is used to add notes to the bill. For the discount feature, we have four different types of discount. We have line percentage, total percentage, line amount and total amount. In this case, we want to discount this item by 10%, we type in the amount of the discount, click on discount and then online percentage. Item 4 now has a 10% discount. If we want to delete the discount, we click on clear and then the discount is deleted. If we want to discount the bill by 10%, we type in 10, click on discount, then on total percentage. The whole bill is now discounted. If we want to delete the discount, we choose the item and click on clear. In case we want to discount a specific amount from one item, for example, we want to remove 50 cents from this item. We select the item, type in 0.5, click on discount and then online amount. We notice how the item's price is now discounted. 
If we want to remove an amount of $10 from the whole bill, we type in 10, click on discount and then on total amount. The whole bill is discounted. As we are making the order, Hamsters POS can give us the quantity available on hand. If we double click the amount at the bottom left of the screen, we can know the quantity, maximum level, minimum level and expiration date. In this case, it's minus 12. We have the option to program the system not to sell if it is below zero. As a measure of security in Hamster's POS, if the customer orders the bill and we want it to cancel it, we have to specify the reason. We can also restrict access by code. If we want to put a bill on hold, we click on the basket here and the bill goes on hold. Once we want to work on it again, we click on list, we retrieve it and it shows up. The print receipt button prints the bill before we close it. The send to kitchen feature is utilized when we have someone in our business who should prepare the items. We can click on keyboard to use Hamster's software keyboard. The hold and fire feature is used when an order is split between items that need to be prepared first and others that need to be on hold for later. The split feature is used when we want to split the bill. We can select the items we want to have split and click on check. The delivery module is utilized if our business offers the service. When our customer calls, their number shows up if there is a caller ID. If it's a new customer, we fill in their name, their address. and all additional data. We can add a second phone number if they have two, we can add their first name, last name, email, if they have a driver note, credit limit, current debt, if they are a VIP customer or a blacklisted customer. Once we fill all the information, we click on save. Then we go to the order and we proceed with it. You can know more about this feature in another video about the delivery module that is already on YouTube. In the home page, click on CMD. We have the employee feature. If we want to give a commission to one of our employee, the cashier should put the bill under their name. Once we choose our order, we click on employee and choose the one who worked on it. Now we can know what they worked on so we can give them a commission accordingly. The reprint button prints the last ticket for a second time. The refund button is used if we want to make a refund. We click on refund and we can notice the minus in our order. The items will automatically go back in stock. Once we click pay, we see the amount we should pay back to our customer, and we click on check to validate. If we click on the drawer button to open, we need to provide a reason. We can also add a security code so that it is restricted to the user responsible for the register. In this case, the reason is to exchange money. If we look at the top right corner of the screen, there is a notification button. In this feature, we can check all of our expired products or we can choose the date. We can look according to the supplier credit, customer debt, the low stock notifications. Let's say here, we have three notifications. We can select them and mark them as red. They will still be on the list which is made according to the minimum and maximum amount. We can also see the subscriptions notifications if we have the service, and the recurrent expenses if we have them. Now, we are going to work on an order where we have a service charge. We choose our items. Let's say, we have pre-configured a 10% service charge. Once we choose our items, we click on the service charge and it will automatically calculate its percentage and add it to the bill. Then we click pay and we validate. In the following case, we have a customer who wants to buy with credits. We start by clicking on select customer and we create a new one. We type in their name, search key, phone number and other. In this case, we need to specify a credit limit. Once we do that, 
we can sell the order to our customer by credit. When we click on pay, we go into the debt section and once we validate, the bill amounting to $30 is now considered a debt associated to the customer. When we look at the final bill, we notice it is designated as, on account. It also has the name of the customer and their current debt. In case the customer wants to pay half the bill in cash, and the other half as debt, we select the customer, in this case, it's credit customer. We select our items and click on pay. They are paying $50 in cash, plus $17 in debt. When we check the final bill, we can see how much they have paid in cash, and how much is on account. We can also see the total debt of the customer that add the previous bill's account to this one.